All right, so it's been unusually quiet in the AI world lately. No big model releases, no major announcements, but you can feel the energy starting to shift. Insane Gemini 3.0 leaks are surfacing. Ilya Sutskever's posting and deleting cryptic tweets. And robots are literally flipping off walls. It almost feels like the calm before the storm. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, we now allegedly have the release date for Gemini 3. This comes from an internal memo that was supposedly leaked, showing Google's timeline for their major milestones. One of those being Gemini 3, which they apparently plan to launch on October 22nd. Now, obviously, take that with a grain of salt. It's just a leak making the rounds on X, which isn't always the most reliable source. But October 22nd is a Wednesday, and that actually lines up with when Google usually rolls out big releases. They tend to drop on either a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And even if that date ends up being off by a few days, it's almost guaranteed we'll see Gemini 3 before the end of October anyway. Because not only have they been teasing it themselves, but known red teamers are already posting demos of it, which means a release is imminent. Here's Chetis Lua, I think that's how you pronounce it, a well-known AI red teamer who usually gets early access to these big models, showing Gemini 3.0 Pro recreating an entire Mac OS interface, fully working. As you can see here, there's even the Apple loading animation. All the apps work, all the tools work, even the browser works. And the wild thing is, it was done in only one shot. Meaning, no iterations, no refining, it just got everything right on the first try. According to Chetis Lua, this is the best AI we've seen to date. And of course, we'll have to see how good the model truly is when it actually comes out. But from everything we've been seeing, it looks like we're gonna have a new winner. In other news, OpenAI and Broadcom just announced a strategic collaboration to deploy 10 gigawatts of OpenAI-designed AI accelerators, aka OpenAI chips. That's right, OpenAI is now officially building its own AI chips, with Broadcom handling the hardware side. They're aiming to roll these out starting in the second half of 2026, which seems insanely fast given the scale. And it's a clear signal that OpenAI wants to reduce its dependence on NVIDIA, who basically have the monopoly on AI chips right now. When you take a step back and look at this from a macro lens, the amount of AI infrastructure being built out right now is actually just insane. According to Harvard economist Jason Furman, GDP growth in the first half of 2025 would have been basically zero if not for the explosion in AI data center construction. In other words, AI is literally propping up the economy. Now, to be fair, if AI wasn't a thing, then money wouldn't just vanish. It would probably be flowing into other industries, housing, manufacturing, clean energy, whatever the next big wave was. But there's a reason it's all pouring into AI right now. At the moment, the highest ROI and future potential are being seen in compute, data centers. It's the one place where investment just keeps compounding. Everyone wants in, because the more compute you have, the more powerful your models become. And the more powerful your models become, the more economically valuable they get, and the more people want to use them. My point is, it's not really a bubble until supply surpasses demand. And if the supply of intelligence, especially ever-increasing intelligence, never stops growing, then that demand might never end. This is the very idea OpenAI was literally founded on. But think about how much more the world would like to do than they get to do right now. If we had 30 gigawatts today with today's quality of models, I think you would still saturate that relatively quickly uh, in terms of what people would do, especially with the lower cost we'll be able to do with this. But the thing we have learned again and again is, let's say we can push GPT-6 to feel like, you know, 30 IQ points past GPT-5, something, something big. The, um, and, and that it can work on problems not for a few hours, but for a few days, weeks, months, whatever. The amount, and while we do that, we bring the cost per token down. The amount of economic value and sort of surplus demand that happens each time we've been able to do that goes up a crazy amount. So you can see, to pick a, I think, well-known example at this point, when ChatGPT could write a little bit of code 
people actually used it for that. They would like very painfully paste in their code and wait and they would say, do this for me and paste it back in and whatever. And models, you know, couldn't do much, but they could do a few things. The models got better, the UI, the UX got better. And now we have Codex. Codex is growing unbelievably fast and can now do like a few hours of work at a higher level of kind of capability. And when that's possible, the, the demand increase is crazy. Maybe the next version of Codex can do like a few days of work at kind of one of the best engineer you know level, or maybe that takes a few more versions, whatever, it'll get there. Think how much demand there will just be for that and then do it for every knowledge work industry. So yeah, I'm not saying we're not in a bubble, but just like Intel CEO recently said in an interview with CNBC, we are in an AI bubble. It's just not popping anytime soon. He basically said it won't burst for at least the next few years. And honestly, that's kind of where I stand on it too. There's definitely hype, but there's also real compounding progress underneath it. I'm curious where you guys stand on this though. Do you think we're in a bubble or still early in the build out phase? Let me know in the comments. Now, another reason I think we're still a long way from this so-called bubble popping is one single tweet from none other than Ilya Suchkover. This week he wrote, truly the greatest day ever, and then deleted it. Now, if you don't know who Ilya Suchkover is, first of all, you should. He's basically one of the godfathers of modern AI, and anytime he tweets something cryptic, the entire community pays attention. There was even an old meme back in the early AI days, what did Ilya see, back when reasoning models weren't even public yet. And it turns out, the thing Ilya saw was QSTAR, a very early version of OpenAI's O-series reasoning models. So when Ilya tweets, it's the greatest day ever, and then instantly deletes it, everyone's back to asking the same question, what did Ilya see, again. Some are suspecting he solved AGI, and while this is all just memes, I honestly wouldn't even be surprised if he managed to do it. I mean, this would be the guy. Now finally, to wrap up this recap, here's an Amazon robot casually backflipping off a wall. This comes from Amazon's Frontier AI and Robotics division, where using reinforcement learning, they managed to train this robot to successfully backflip off a wall five out of five times. It's incredibly impressive, but also a little terrifying, like most of these humanoid robotics demos lately. Amazon says this is part of their push toward more adaptable warehouse robots, but honestly, I'm not sure how useful backflips are for carrying around boxes. Anyways, that's all for today's recap. Thanks for watching, drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.